It is my pleasure as well to introduce our, our presenter tonight, Jane Sodero of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Jane is the secretary of the Royal Felt Talk Society of Canada and president of the RPSC Felt Talk Research Foundation. Her collecting interests are the postal history of Guysborough County of Nova Scotia, which she will present tonight. And her other uh, interests include the Canada 10 cent Eskimo Defendive of 1955. And other interests also include Selania and Mork, uh, who design and engrave stamps worldwide, both renowned Swedish engravers. In fact, uh, Martin Mork uh, did engrave for Canada, for Canada Post, the $2 Bear Defender of, of uh, 2000 and, um, sorry, of 1998. She is uh, an accredited national level judge and exhibitor, um, a member of many societies, which includes the Phil Talks of Canada, uh, BNAPS, PHSC, uh, the AAPE and the PHSC. Um, as well as others, and a Nova Scotia staff. So it is my pleasure to present to you her presentation, the post history of Byro County in Nova Scotia, Jane Stodero. Jane. Thank you very much, Andrew, for that kind uh, introduction. So uh, tonight I'm going to speak a bit about the postal history of Guysboro, Nova Scotia. Uh, just to situate ourselves, uh, I, there are a few Nova Scotians on the, the, uh, in the audience tonight, but I know that Guysboro isn't that well known. So here we are uh, in the Maritime Provinces uh, and Guysboro County is the green area just uh, to the east of Halifax County. It is one of the larger counties in the, in the province, but perhaps uh, smallest by population. Here's a more detailed uh, map of the county. And in the 18... 100, it was actually divided up into small units. It's now two units, St. Mary's and Guysboro, but at that time there were actually uh, five different units. And the area that we're looking at is the community of Guysboro, which is in the cent uh, edge of this blue section here on Chetabucto Bay. And this was a map that was done uh, by AF Church in the mid uh, 1800s. Uh, that showed the town layout and church did these for many of the ca uh, counties and smaller communities across Nova Scotia. So you can see that it was a busy little community back in 1876, but it's a challenging area to collect. There is no rail through the county. There's no air traffic. There, there's no airports. It's mainly a rural population. Uh, it was settled uh, by the loyalists get, who were given land grants uh, in the late 1700s, displacing the local Mi'kmaq community. There are limited, also limited port facilities in the town of Guysboro. So there's a reliance on fishing and farming. There are some extra services in Guysboro itself because it was the county seat. So there was a bank and, of course, the post, uh, post office and lawyers, doctors, which people traveled in from smaller communities for. The rail actually was a failed effort. There was a movement from the late 1800s uh, to the mid 1900s to put rail into the county, but it never did go through. And you can see by the graph in the middle that the population uh, really, it peaked in the late 1800s and fell steadily and dramatically into the 1900s. And it was one of those places that didn't prosper at all after um, the wars. There are newspaper articles talking about how other communities in Nova Scotia had a bit of a boom after the wars, but Guysboro didn't. And you do see that the post office revenue did go up in that period. But when you look at the post office revenue in relation to the postage rate, you can see that the 
ups and downs are just about in line. And a lot of the cancels were used for very short periods of time. So again, that's made it very difficult to, to find different usages. So the earliest item I have is not postmarked in Guysboro. Uh, it's a letter that was sent from Guysboro, would have been put in the mail system in Antigonish in February 1825. And it was from Thomas Cutler. And Cutler was known as King Cutler. He really ran the, the community, according to all the historical records that I've, I've read. He owned a lot of land, he controlled the, uh, he was a merchant. And in this letter, he's actually making an appeal to a, a property owner in Halifax, uh, or somebody in Halifax who owns property in Guysboro County because somebody wants to buy land in Guysboro. So he seems to be the one who makes those made those things happen. And this was the first postmaster of Guysboro. It was King Cutler's son, Robert. He represented Guysboro in the Nova Scotia House of Assembly and in the Nova Scotia Legislative Council. And he operated the way office. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, another map of Guysboro. So earlier than the, the first one, this one is, is actually 1830. So at the beginning of, of having a post office. And as you can see, it, it's a pretty small community. It's thought that Cutler's, Robert Cutler's political connections uh, made the authorities kind of look the other way when he decided to create this post postmark for the post office. According to uh, J.J. McDonald's books, book, there's there are fewer than five copies of this cancellation in private hands. Although I I think and uh, Hugh Rathbun, uh, who I know is on this, um, may be able to back me up on this, but I believe that there probably are a few more than five. Uh, I just from pictures that I've seen, it was sent to this Robert Alder. And he was responsible for the supervision of Wesleyan missions in uh, British North America and did spend time in Nova Scotia just previous to the to 1838 when this letter was written. There also is a bit of controversy uh, about how long Cutler was the postmaster because he really turned the running of the office over to this Edward Irish Cunningham. And a lot of the reports I've seen say that Cunningham was postmaster for 32 years, but they also say that uh, Cutler was a po was a postmaster when when the office was established. The actual post office, as opposed to the way office, was established in 1841. So, how much? Uh, who, who took on what responsibility? We'd have to probably go back in time to, to, to know for sure. But this Edward Irish Cunningham was born in Antigonish County, so just up the road from Guysboro. And he was sent to Guysboro to work, uh, mainly on ships initially. And he worked for Robert Cutler, and he became responsible for the post office. Um, and he moved the post office from just outside what is now sort of Guysboro proper, uh, right to the middle of the community. He also is said to have established the first packet service to, uh, Guy to Halifax. So whether or not he was postmaster for 55 years or just responsible for the post office, uh, something something like that. And here we have an illustration of Guysboro from the water in 1872 that appeared in the Canadian Illustrated News. So it's a growing community, certainly compared to the little community that was there on the map in 1830. So the next marking that was uh, introduced in Guysboro came in about the time the, the official post office was opened and it was the paid marking. 
And here we see two examples of it. Uh, one from February 1844 and one from uh, 1852. And the 1851 is interesting because Jeff Cott Green and Young reported uh, recorded dates from 1841 to 44. So this is significantly later use than that. And there are back stamps uh, very, very clearly showing it to be 1852 from July 2nd in Guysboro and in Halifax, July 6th. And then in 1842, Guysboro was one of the few communities in Nova Scotia to receive a crown marking. And this was used, uh, we believe, from a boat uh, September 1842 to October 1842. So again, very few uh, copies known. And in this example, it's uh, there's no postage because it's a free frank letter. This abol That service was abolished two years later. And then we get into the double split ring cancel. And there were two different types used in Guysboro. One was a slightly larger, this one, uh, 29. Uh, 0.5 millimeters. And J.J. McDonald in his book says that the earliest possible date for this hammer to be used in Guysboro was February 23rd, 1843, because it was mailed from London in December 1842. I don't have any examples as early as 1843, but I do have these examples from uh, 1847 and 1856. And it seems to be, in my experience, mainly used as a back stamp. Now, it could well have been used as a front stamp as well, but uh, in most of the examples that I've seen are, are back stamps. Uh, so we have one letter going from Guysboro to Halifax and another from Halifax to Guysboro. Again, one of the challenges of this small community is that it's very difficult to find mail going to or from uh, foreign destinations, which um, judges always like to see in, uh, ex in exhibits. These were farmers and fishermen. They didn't go very far from home necessarily. So uh, I was pretty thrilled uh, to find this uh, letter from Stepney to Guysboro and from 1852, and it was written to uh, James Eager Cutler from Lawrence Hartshorn. And James Eager Cutler was married to Sarah Hartshorn, brother and sister. And it was, it's kind of an interesting letter. He talks about his his travels, and in his letter, he says he's quite tired of seafaring life, but he also says that he. The next stop is Port Adelaide, Australia. So he's got a lot, of, a lot certainly had a lot of seafaring in, in front of him uh, after the letter was written. There were a series of rate markings used in Guysboro. I have the two different three, two of the three different threes uh, the, that, that J.J. McDonald reports in his book. Uh, and I do have a slightly earlier one than of the, the first one. So I've got it from 1851 while he uh, records it as being in 1852. Uh, the second uh, is, eight, is December 1857, so slightly later than his reported use of uh, November 1857. There are three other markings reported by J.J. McDonald. Uh, I'm always on the lookout for them, so um, I'm looking for a three, a five, and a six, and I haven't I haven't seen them yet. So after Mr. Cunningham uh, gave up the uh, post office, in came William Godfrey Hadley, and he was postmaster from 1887 until his death in uh, 1911. Don't know a lot about him, although Hadley is a very common name in that area. And he was the first of three Hadleys to be um, in charge of the post office in in Guysboro. Here we have a receipt for the uh, registration 
and, and initialed by Hadley uh, from, from 1887, so not long after he took over the post office. And it was during his tenure that the second uh, split ring cancel came uh, into use. And here we have show three, I show three different examples of it. Uh, an 1887 example uh, used on a registered letter to Lock Harbor in, Geis in Antigonish County. So again, just up the road. And another one, a regular rate to Trackady, Antigonish County, again, just up the road. And uh, for those of you who may not know, the four-digit number on the top left-hand uh, corner of this cover, that is a catalog, catalog number of um, McPherson, who wrote a book of the post offices of Nova Scotia. It's a listing of, of the opening and closings of all the post offices. And mo most importantly, uh, I think for postal historians, how they, the ones that changed names, because there were several that went through two, three, sometimes four different names over the years. And so it's quite a, a, hel a helpful book. And here we have uh, West, uh, another cover to West River uh, Sheet Harbor, again, used as a back stamp from 1889. And this one is slightly a uh, smaller diameter. I believe it's a uh, 28.5 millimeter, um, so slightly smaller than the other double split ring. And then for a very short period of time, there was a split ring cancel in use in the, in the Guys Row Post Office. And I have uh, three different examples, each one sort of slightly different, which I, I always found interesting. So the first one is just the uh, on the postcard with just the split ring cancel from 1882. In 1883, we see it with the grid, the line, the barred uh, obliterator. This was used on and off over the years in, in Guysboro, more off than on but it's a very common uh, mark to see in many post offices in Nova Scotia. And then here we have a cork uh, cancel obliterating the stamp. And this is the only cork cancel that I've know, I, I know of uh, for the Guysboro post office. Here we have a too late marking. So this was a letter, um, A.N. Whitman, was a, a merchant in Canso, which is as far out uh, on the of mainland Halifax or mainland Nova Scotia as you can get. It's uh, not now known for the Stan Rogers Festival, but uh, then it was where a, a transatlantic cable came ashore at Hazel Hill, just next door. So. The, this letter was mailed on a Friday, but it missed that that Friday steamer to Canso. So in the end, it took three days to get to, to Canso with a 16th of August receiver on the back. Also during Hadley's ten tenure as postmaster, a new post office and customs house was built. So this was built on the water side of Main Street in Guys Row, where the post office had before been on the high side of the water. Uh, it, it was built of granite from a nearby quarry. Uh, the land was purchased from an Eliza Tory. And for those of you from Toronto, yes, that Tory. The, the Tories were originally, or not originally, but they they did originate at one point from, from Guysboro. Um, I do have a family connection, which I'll get into a little bit, but my father talks a, a lot about a number of uh, mostly young men from Guysboro going to work for Sun Life Insurance uh, because of their connection with the Tories. And the it, the name is actually spelled in several different uh, ways, R-R-E-Y, uh, R-E-Y, R-R-I-E, but they're somehow all connected. The uh, post office also had a clock and with a bell uh, installed in 1910, and it was restored in the late 1900s, uh, uh, 
late, yeah, late, just before the turn of this century um, into good working order. And it, uh, according to uh, Laurier Grant, who I'll, I'll talk about later, it, it was really an important part of the day uh, hearing the, the bell chime. Uh, it was something when it stopped working that a lot of people in the community really rallied to, to have the clock fixed. So after William Hadley died, his wife, Mary Elizabeth or Lizzie Hadley, took over the postmaster the, as postmistress, I guess. So she was the his widow, but also an aunt of Laurier Grant. And I've mentioned Laurier a couple times now, but I will get into him in a little bit. Not a lot changed in the seven from a postal marking point of view during her tenure. But I did want to show a little bit of how the community itself has changed. So they, this is a bookmark postcard that was produced by the Pew Manufacturing Company in Toronto. They didn't actually print the postcards. The printing was done in England, but they produced these small, and the, it, it's exactly the, the size you're thinking of when you, you think of, of bookmark these postcards for, for many different sites ac across. This is a picture of the wharf. Uh, where the steamer that that letter probably missed, and this could well even be that steamer, would dock. Uh, there's no date on it, but the photo is probably taken by William Buckley, and he ran a watchmaking and jewelry store, but had a side business of, of, of photography. And several of his children, including uh, Walter, followed him in that business. And there are a ton of images of Guysboro town the and the surrounding area that were taken by members of the Buckley family available at the on the Nova Scotia archives website and uh, he really was able to to capture some of the the people and the activities that happened in in Guysboro during that period of time so and Walter uh his many of his uh photos were produced as postcards, uh, and and you'll oft, often see if you see a sort of 1930s to 1950s postcard of the Guysboro area, it's often done by by a by a Buckley. So after uh, Lizzie died, Daisy, their daughter, took over the post office, but she she was only there for a couple of years. She was married shortly after her. Her mother died, and she was allowed to retain the post office after her marriage, it, so say the, the postal records. So, but she didn't, she didn't stay long, so uh, I guess the requirements of, of her married life uh, meant that she gave up her, her job. Uh, this is another view of Guy's Row from about the same period. Uh, again, a, a real photo and uh, no markings on the back, but also likely uh, a photo by Buckley. So now we get to Laurier and Marion Grant. Laurier and would be my third cousin, no, my first cousin three times removed. So my great-grandmother's first cousin. Uh, my grandmother's father was killed in a car accident in 1924, and I think Laurier and Marion ended up playing a big role in, in my grandmother's life, and my dad uh, talks a lot about visiting Guysboro over the years. My grandmother grew up there, um, but he talks about going and visiting the post office and helping Laurier and Marion sort the mail, and so uh, I was able, my interest in Guysboro uh, started as a teenager, and I and Laurier was still living at that time, so I was able to talk to him about and to Marion about their time working in the post office. And he explained to me how the mail came in, and they would sort it, and it would go from there uh, to thirty different, thirty three actually, uh, different more rural post offices. Uh, towards Canso. He talked about the people who worked for him, one full-time clerk, two part-time clerks, a cleaner, and he was responsible also for paying for stationery and supplies. 
and when his uh, children were left the nest, I guess, uh, Marion actually took on one of the roles as, as part-time clerk. He explained how he was paid, which was in a commission on sales of stamps and money orders. And he also got received about 7% of the stamp sales in the rural offices. He lived in the post office building and he was a caretaker for the building. And he talked about having to shovel the coal in and there were tons of tons of coal uh, to, to heat a building of that size. Also having to shovel the and and keep the ice away from the front of the building. Um, and and also the hours. Uh, even on most holidays, the the post office was open at least for a short period of time. Uh, most days it was open 12 hours a day. So it really was their life uh, while raising two children and so I was very lucky to have had that opportunity to, to speak with them. And, and here we have a RCAF aerial photo that was made into a postcard of Guysboro. And every time I do this, I search for the post office and it's right here. So really you can see that it, the community hasn't grown in since the, the late 1800s, it's essentially the same, the same size, the same uh, number of buildings. Buildings may be newer, or have been replaced, but for the most part, it, it's, it's a stable community. Now here we go back in time a little bit, back and forth. So in my looking at uh, Guysboro over the years, I found at least seven different CDSs that were used by the office over the years, each slightly differently. And if you were to see my exhibit, you'll see a line of these uh, drawings side by side. Here I've got them spread out a bit, so I don't know that it works quite as well, but showing the diameter of each one when, the, when they were proofed, whether they had an AM or PM demarcation, the G seems to be different. Uh, it, it's one of the things that distinguishes the different one, the different uh, hammers, and whether it has a long arc of Guysboro or whether it has a narrow M, N or a wider N. And here I've attempted to find examples of each one. So here we have one on a, just a local use, another to Arashat. Here, again, uh, the diameter is slightly different on these C and D. A cover to Halifax, but to Debar. Debar is another name that's well known in the, to, to people looking for, for information about Guysboro. Uh, here we have it, on, uh, I, I've turned it upside down so that the mark shows more clearly, but the uh, to, it's just to Dort's Cove, which is just a couple of miles down the road. Another here to New Glasgow, but again, a Debar cover. And here's one coming from Isaac's Harbor, so down the shore to uh, just past Can or not past Canso, but around the corner from Canso. And then the last one, the G, again, is a back stamp and the very distinct. Uh, tail on the, the G, and it's a registered letter from Charlotte's Cove, again, just down the road. So, you know, back to my comment earlier, a lot of my covers are local to Guysboro, Guysboro County, Anaganish, maybe as far as Halifax or New Glasgow, but finding anything uh, further afield is, is, has been a real challenge. The next cancel is a duplex. So it was introduced in 1916 uh, and a second one in 1927. There's only one known date of use for the earlier example, which I have the September uh, 1st, 1916. And then the other was proofed in 1923. I have examples from 1927 and 1928 mainly. Uh, and uh, it, this is quite typical that this, 
that the year and the AM PM marking have been reversed in all the examples that I have. It's it's that done that way again. To, back to Debar, and and this is actually a uh, I believe be, given the date, it was probably an unsealed Christmas card, so it was able to pass for one cent. These are two of the registration markings used in the, the post office, one from 1894, the latter from uh, 1934, so very typical. And that's where I framed a lot of things in my uh, synopsis, is that I'm trying to show that Guysboro is really typical of a lot of rural post offices, uh, whether it's in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, I suspect that many in Ontario and out west are are the, are the same uh, in the, the development of the markings that were used in the office. Finally, here I get into uh, some of the different uh, uses uh, of the post or roles of the post office. These were uh, government annuities passbooks, and I do have uh, several of these. Some of them just use the CDSs uh, as the date stamp, but here we have the money order office data, which is what was supposed to have been used. So this one's from 1935. Here we have the money order transfer office cancel from 1937, and a second one, a different one that was, it's from August 1946. They are slightly different sizes. You can see the difference in, in the uh, distance between the date and the NS you know, between these two markings. I really concentrated this, the, um, and I have, have been concentrating for the last while on the town of Guysboro itself. So what do I do next? And I have in the past looked at tracing the different uh, the postal routes. I did ex an exhibit a very long time ago. Uh, I think it was still when I was a junior exhibitor showing the, diff the 33 different post offices that were served out of the Guysboro Post Office. Hazel Hill was one of them. Uh, so this is going to be, uh, this, I wouldn't have had this piece when I did that exhibit. So this will be a really nice addition. Um, to the exhibit. This is a cover from Canso, and you can just see the Canso here, um, to Prince Edward Island. So a uh, very busy back. It's not the prettiest of covers. Uh, might have to, to visit a, a doctor or something. We'll, we'll have to see. The other thing is that I, I haven't looked at the more recent uh, postal history recently. Uh, Guysboro did have one of the, uh, I say one, at least two of the pictorial cancels. And this is a beautiful cover that was done by Hugh Rathbun. Hugh and I also collect uh, souvenir china. And uh, Guysboro actually has a number of pieces of super souvenir china, uh, and several of which include the post office. So uh, I didn't ha have a picture uh, of my own, but I think this one uh, is a, com a great combination of the two. And then there's the rest of Guysboro County, uh, what's now uh, St. Mary's District, where we have Sherbrooke. Sherbrooke is, has been well known over the years uh, as another sort of focal point, uh, similar to Guysboro, Guysboro Town. Um, and now is the home of Sherbrooke Village where they've taken a number of historic buildings and either the, some of which were originally there and some have been brought to the um, sort of, uh, similar to an Upper Canada Village. This is just a beautiful um, business corner cover and I have quite a number from across Guysboro County. And I also do a look at postcards and this is Goldenville. Uh, there was gold found in the, in in Guysboro County, and uh, for a very short period of time, Goldenville was uh, a, a hopping place. So uh, I've got lots to to go uh, from from here. And I should say that um, Hugh 
Rathbun and Jack Forbes, who are both members here, have been a huge help to me over the years. Uh, as soon as they saw that I was taking an interest in postal history and in Guysborough County postal history, they were uh, right in there offering advice and uh, keeping an eye out for material for me. And the other thing that I do have to acknowledge is that this ex my exhibit, um, it sort of floundered for a number of years because it's a small place and uh, it really doesn't have a lot of oomph uh, in terms of fancy airmail covers or things like that. But I did send it to the AAPE Exhibit Critique Service and the critique that I received back uh, was absolutely incredible. And it went, uh, the exhibit went very quickly after I followed the the uh, advice um, to to a gold exhibit uh, in the United States, which I was absolutely thrilled about. So um, thank you very much. And I will stop sharing my screen. Well, Jane, I, I would really like to thank you for uh, your yeah. excellent presentation tonight. Uh, collecting postal history from one small community uh, boggles my mind. I collect from one community, Berlin Kitchener, but the uh, amount of postal history from that town uh, is astronomic compared to what you're endeavoring to do. Uh, just, just lovely, lovely material. I love to look at it. I'm hopefully you'll find more so you come back and tell us your new finds, and uh, possibly you can paddle your kayak uh, up here and show us. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks once again, Jane. Amazing. Thank you very much for inviting me. Here's a certificate uh, I put in the mail to you yesterday. Uh, thank you for tonight. Very nice. Also included in that package is your PSSC pin, which uh, you qualify for now because you've uh, fulfilled your obligation to the society. So wear it proudly. Uh, thank you once again. <laughs>